Well, hello again. I'm Mayor Diane Marland for Urbana, Illinois, and welcome back for the second day of the 12th annual virtual Folk and Roots Festival. We have music, workshops, and discussions today. Visit folkandroots.org for all the details and feel free to sing and dance your way through the day. The city of Urbana is an official Illinois arts friendly community. We sponsor the Folk and Roots Festival. It's all volunteer run through a grant from our arts and culture program. It's one of the premier events that helps people engage with the arts and helps artists thrive. During the pandemic, it's more important than ever to come together through the arts while staying apart. And the Urbana Arts and Culture Program supports this festival and many other events, arts in the schools. We have our very own Poet Laureate and Youth Poet, Poet Laureate. And our latest venture is CU Art Doors, where we invite the community to showcase their art in front of their homes and businesses. And this weekend in downtown Urbana, we're showcasing the artists, workshops, and discussions of the 12th annual Virtual Folk and Roots Festival. Again, it's not how we expect it to be, but it's how we have to be in 2020. Please visit folkandroots.org for all the details, and I'll see you all on Main Street in Urbana, Illinois. Hello there. My name is Robin Kirtan. I'm with the Community Center for the Arts, and I'm the director of the Bodacious String Band, which you were just watching. Um, the video you were looking at is an unfinished sort of rough draft of part of a bigger project that we're working on currently. Since the uh, shutdown, we have been meeting either in person in really small groups with protocols when the weather's nice or else inside on Zoom. Over the summer, we did our first video. It was just a single piece called Liberty. And um, when the new semester started, we decided that it might be fun to expand a little bit, kind of spread our wings. And we decided to do a semester project that's a video that we expect to be about 20 minutes long. And it will have music from Africa, Mexico, Eastern Europe, and of course the US and these areas have tunes that we really like and also just happen to reflect the constituency of our band. On October 11th it was a really nice day and the band met down at the Boneyard Creek and that's where we took the shots that you were just looking at. The, uh, we had a few parents come and uh, with extra cameras and take all those different angles that you were able to see and this will be incorporated into the final project. 
uh, the kids in the band have voted that they want the project to somehow support organizations that are doing work in the areas of Black Lives Matter and global warming. And we expect that the whole video, which will also include uh, some smaller breakout groups and some uh, highlight some extra musical skills of our band, we expect that to be coming out in January. And we'll do our best to get the word out so people can know to look for it. We um, called on C4A's African music specialist, Jean-René Balakita, to come and play with us for this piece. Uh, it's called Mbube, um, originally published in 1939 by a musician from Johannesburg, South Africa, named Solomon Linda. And if it sounded a little familiar, right. that's say, uh, because like it's the same song that was the no. basis for a tune called The Lion Sleeps. It's been used in like a Disney movie, the and it's been uh, played often during the folk revival in the mid-20th century and beyond. So uh, that's what the Bodacious String Band is doing, and in just a little while, uh, we'll cut back and show you some more of that footage. But first, I'd like to tell you about some of the other things going on at C4A. We have, uh, you know, a lot of our ensembles have been suspended because of uh, safety issues. There are a few up and running. Our country music band, run by Dyke Corson, uh, outstanding musician in our community, has been fortunate enough to be able to practice outdoors in the parking lot at the Rose Bowl. And uh, thank you to the Rose Bowl people for, uh, for making that available to them. It's meant a lot to them to be able to get together safely to play some music. When it gets too cold, they'll go inside and they'll probably work on some sort of um, audio or video project also. Uh, I also direct a group of uh, musicians who play Baroque and Renaissance music. It's called Old Music. And we've been meeting exclusively on Zoom since the shutdown. We recently released our first collaborative video with Pavan and Galliard, and uh, you can find that on C4A's YouTube channel. Uh, finally, uh, we have a new ensemble this semester that was conceived just to be online, um, and it's called The Fleas. It's a ukulele ensemble directed by Tom Foe, and uh, they've just released their first audio recording and so I'd like to take a little time right now to um, just give you a little sample of what that sounds like. sounds really great. Um, we also are still doing our uh, lessons at C4A. We have about 20 teachers and they're all doing on Zoom. So if you're interested in participating in music, which is what folk music is all about actually, um, look us up and maybe we can help you get going on that. Um, okay, I'm going to just put out a shout for um, thanking the Folk and Roots people for inviting us to uh, come in and show you some of our stuff. And uh, I'll just take the video out now with the second part of that um, video. Uh, again, it's a, it's a work in progress. We still have to do adding the audio tracks. Um, Jean René is going to put some improvised vocals over it. Um, all the members are going to be doing their own recordings and it'll be mixed together. So it'll be quite a bit thicker in sound when it's finally reduced, released. And, as I said, it'll be part of a bigger work that we're going to be releasing in January. But meanwhile, there's some fun shots in here, and I hope that you enjoy seeing the rest of it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> 